The Australian Science and Mathematics School caters for the three final years of schooling before entry into higher education. Established in 2002, the purpose-built facility is designed to promote and support highly collaborative, interactive, student-directed learning. Kids come to school, particularly adolescent kids, number one reason, social interaction. And so what we were desperately trying to do is take the, the power that comes with adolescent social interaction and transfer it into the learning environment. So what we've endeavoured to do is use our space to facilitate lots of interaction, analysis, interpretation, debate, collaboration. What that does is give a whole sense of empowerment to kids with their learning. So we're after a whole sense of young people taking charge of their learning in, in ways that they perhaps haven't done before. What that means for teachers is it transfers the, their onus to being the guide on the side rather than the authoritarian teacher sage on the stage. Coming to a school like this from a traditional school, um, you notice a lot of differences in their learning techniques and the way they go about teaching things to you. Um, you very much have to take control of your own learning in the way that um, they don't uh, push you so much to work. It's that if you want to do it and you want to succeed, then you will motivate yourself. It's a lot more difficult because sort of we have to direct our learning rather than teachers doing it for us. And, yeah, the work's just generally harder. You need flexibility, adaptability. You need for young people to be able to take control of and utilise the learning environment to their own ends. So access to ICT platforms, uh, access to each other, access to other materials, access to teachers and enable students to pick and use those resources for any learning activity that they want to apply themselves to. You know, on any one occasion you might see 80 or 100 students in, a, in the big learning space downstairs uh, doing the formal uh, lecture, explicit teaching situation to smaller class groups that, with, a, with an individual teacher that might be 20 students. But you'll also see groups of students, six students at a time, conferencing around a table, three or four students around a screen doing some web-based research and individual students working by themselves. And the real beauty of what we've got here is the ability to do all of those things uh, at any point in time. Being co-located with Flinders University leads to benefits all round. Students use the library next door, while education students from the university gain experience at the school. We also work very closely with the School of Science at Flinders University and the academics and postgraduate students work with our teachers as well as our students to help us understand their science but also the university staff have the opportunity to work with our staff uh, in developing curriculum and teaching and learning materials for senior secondary school students. So that partnership is a, a very important partnership for the university and for us. Close contact with the university also helps promote a culture of learning with the school's students exposed to further education pathways. Young people need to feel important about that or have a sense of importance about the learning, their own learning that they're doing. And uh, the benefit these young people have is that they can come into a, a well, a, a, a wider learning environment, a wider community, uh, with some feelings about, hmm, it's an important place to be. The building itself is designed to enhance an atmosphere of learning. And certainly what this building's been able to do is give that visual connectedness uh, for young people uh, with their learning. I mean, the, the fact that teachers' offices aren't behind closed doors. There's a vision that goes from, you know, students can see teachers being attentive to whatever they're doing. It's a very open environment here, so it's critical that we have a sense of team to develop and establish and, and then maintain a learning culture. So we have to have constant dialogue about uh, the way that we're interpreting our curriculum, the way that we're working um, using the physical space here. Lots of educators come and visit and they often comment about 
uh, how engaged, how attentive to learning these young people are. And you can't describe what you haven't found. That's right, that's right. So he... How did the TER scores go? Um, they were outstanding scores from our students. As far as learners, they are very aware of what suits their, their needs best and they're able to, on the whole, manage that learning environment in order to achieve what they wanted to achieve. And uh, we've tracked those students into their university and TAFE pathways, uh, which has been the predominant pathway for our students at this stage. And the success rate in their university and TAFE courses has also been very pleasing. I'm planning on doing forensics at uni and becoming a fire cause investigator. I want to become an electrician and actually have a course here that's devoted completely to practical electrics. I'm thinking about possibly becoming a vet or a doctor and this is definitely where I want to be to be able to accomplish those goals because it provides me with all the knowledge that I'll need.